Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step and talk you through all my supplies and everything to paint these lovely loose, quick, lovely vibrant anemones and I hope I inspire you so you go ahead and have a go. So stay tuned, hope you enjoy it. Here's a quick speeded up version for you, stay tuned to see the full length step by step. Stands on the sideline, dances slow and looks at me. She must be the sunlight, shines a little more tonight. I know I tried to make her mine, but at the same time. Hi, um, welcome. I'm going to paint some uh, anemones. This is, um, I'm recording it live and I'm going to try and not um, edit it. But, um, so it would be like one of my live paintings because I didn't do one this morning. So I thought I'll just video it live and see what happens. So. I am going to be using, I'm going to paint some anemones, really quick, simple, loose and free ones. Uh, this is the paper I'm using, it's um, Langton Watercolour, I was given this by my friend and it's a £140, so A3 size paper, see this one here. It's got a bit dirty because it's been on the floor. Um, <laughs> not very good at doing that. Um, yeah, excuse my squeaky chair. If you watch me live, you know know about my squeaky chair. So I'll probably be using this brush more than any other brush. So this is a foo 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 face squirrel number ten round brush. I've got my water jug. I've got some tissue paper towel I've got some diluted bleach I've got a spray water bottle which I will just use here on my watercolor palette which may look a bit scary to beginners but I know where all my colors are and I like how I've set it up I can't remember I never remember the names of all the colors but um <laughs> I know, I got, oh yeah, that's that nice colour there. So m most of my colours are Winsor Newton, Daniel Smith and Van Gogh colours in these palettes. So if I remember the names of them, I will tell you. But I'll just go, oh yeah, that's that nice pink. Or oh, that's that nice blue or something. And that's, I think we'll probably, I'll probably use some uh, pencil crayons as well, like water soluble ones. Actually, I need to get them because I am really not prepared. I need to sharpen that one. This is a Faber Castle pencil. If you hear funny noises in the background, that is my guinea pig. He's wanting my attention today. <laughs> so you might hear him squeaking. It's very, been very demanding. Aren't you, Sushi? Sorry, I'm pencils I'm not organised and I'm not editing this <laughs> so I've got a selection of water soluble pencils here and I'll probably be using a black and a blue and maybe a red and I've also got a bit of sandpaper centers yeah this little bit we're doing this is a little bit of sandpaper which is a really coarse one which I like I like to sand the the water soluble pencils over the top. Anyway, let's get going and um, see what happens. Um, I'm doing a bunch of multicolored uh, anemones like the reds and the purples, and I'm sort of doing it from memory because <laughs> I've painted these so many times and I know what the flowers like, so I've got the muscle memory there to remember. Um, but go and go and look at the flower. You need to know a lot about the flower before you paint. Actually, go ahead and paint. I'm going to start with uh, I've got py pyrene scarlet here, which I'm going to use. I'm going to slap a big red anemone in the 
in the middle. Um, it's going to look a bit like a poppy. People do get the um, a poppy and an enemy um, muddled up. And um, I can't remember, do I have eight petals? Six or eight, anyway, I do. You don't have to be, this isn't a botanical painting, so it hasn't got to be botanically correct. If, if I was doing like a botanical painting, you'd have to have it all correctly done. But we're just sort of capturing the essence of the flowers. And then there's a white one here, I'm thinking. And then I'm gonna have blue. So I've got a nice blue here. So. I think that's ultramarine here and I'm mixing it with a bit of indigo if I'm right and I'm going to try and remember that that's the edge and then there's a white flower up there so just try and remember dropping in lots of water also like to um, add a bit of bleach around the outside of these so it sort of adds, adds a bit of excitement to the painting. And if you look at the anemone leaves, they're quite um, like frilly. I'll, I'll try and um, put in my greens here. <laughs> I'll try and like paint one in here so, so you know what I mean. They're like this. Again, it's not botanically correct, but I'm just painting them in. I hope the shadows aren't too bad because it's a really miserable day here. And I've got my lights on in my studio. I haven't got any like proper photographic lights on because I find them a bit garish. Occasionally they're all right. <laughs> and then I'm going to do like a purpley, a purpley one. I've got some nice purple colours. I don't know what this purple is called that I've got over here. You probably can't see it at the minute, but yeah, let's stick a purple one in. Where should we do it? Up here. Sort of, this one's sort of looking that way. <laughs> so you can't see the centre of it. So you'll see the, um, I don't mind all these splashes I get. I think it adds to the excitement of the painting. So you can see the stem. I don't mind it all washing in. Let's have a bit of greeny yellow, greeny yellow, greeny green, yellowy green even. <laughs> Here, let's add some, I like, like adding some, some, I'm just like dragging the paint with the water soluble pencil and the drawing at the same time so it adds sort of a nice little dimension. I'm going to use the sandpaper just to show you what I mean. Um, this is like the pollen that comes off the anemones and it only sticks to where the paint's wet. I'm just going to blow that and you can see what I mean. So it's easy to get really like <laughs> carried away with doing that. Try not to do it too much because then it just doesn't look right. <laughs> Right, in here is a, uh, it's supposed to be green, is a white flower, but you might like go, uh, shock, shock and whatever. Oh, I'm mixing up a, a dirty purple, a dirty purple over here. Really not nice purple. This is the shadow caused the other flowers for the white flower so this is the white flower in the middle here and i'm going to do another white one over here a nice white anemone and i'm not worried too worried about that you can just blot it if it does it too much but it's nice to have a bit of, of the colour reflecting. If you do look at all the multicolour flowers together, it does pick up the colours from other the other flowers. And I'm also going to have another purple one here. Let's 
put some stems and things in now. I might try and um, get some background. I just want it all to um, be really loose and wet. And I like uh, quinacridone gold, like for the background colours. Uh, it's just like a, I should make the purples pop a bit. <laughs> And soften some of the petals and things. Squish it in. Don't worry about it all bleeding in because you can come back and paint over the top when it's drier. And have some hard edges going on. the white flower that I don't want. I'm just going to blot out some of this so I don't lose the white. And let's put in some stems and some more um, leaves. They go a bit weird on the wet and wet, but you can come in and define what's what when it's a bit dry. And I also like to add just a little bit of salt. A bit of, a bit of excitement in there. You can get carried away with that as well, but... <laughs> Try not to. Excuse my squeaky chair. Right, I'm going to start painting the centres. I've got some. Uh, la, 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 what colour is this? This is. It's black. <laughs> Daniel Smith black. Um, I've forgotten what colour it's called, but it is Daniel Smith black. Let's <laughs> put in the centres of the flowers. Lunar black, that's the colour. Mm old brain and this should like define the um, the painting and I've got a I wanted to use a <laughs> I got this rollerball pen and I'd like using this for the um, I know it sounds a bit weird my chair's really squeaky today, and I don't know why. What am I looking for? I'm looking for my black pencil. <laughs> I'm just dragging. Sometimes I use the um, this pen, which gives a thinner line and more. But I think I've, I'm happy using my water-soluble pencil today. Just give it a bit of a sharpen. I'm just going to eat because you don't want the centres to be all really dark. You can add more dark in a bit. And then I'm just painting the centres. Whilst I'm here, I'm going to get my blue pencil. To define and that and then also the red one for this one before I do the black centers just to might put another red one in actually here I think it'll look nice <laughs> just coming off the edge of the page I won't do it so intense as that one because it's nice to have some like muted colors so it looks different, it gives a bit of, um, what do you call it, movement to the painting and your eye can look, look across it, because a bit adds to the composition. Yeah, I think that would be pretty splosh. <laughs> So 
So I have a bit bored doing this bit. <laughs> I can use my other pencil, I don't like that one as much. This is a um, Faber Castle one. This is where I end up scribbling. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like really intense. And don't do them all like with the same amount as I do tend to get a bit carried away sometimes and do them with the same. And enemies have a lot of stamens, they're a bit like poppies. The way they're constructed. Let's paint the middle of this one in. Just gonna let that bleed because I think that would look quite nice. I'm just gonna drag it out whilst it's wet on that one. A few highlights. I'm going to come in and work some shadows in to the uh, white flowers just to make them pop out a bit. Also, I like to add a bit of like yellowy green to the middles. It's kind of like a gold colour, it sort of like pushes them back a bit, soften that a bit. The shadow. But now I've got my um, dirty colour and I'm going to paint in the shadows. Sorry if you see me licking my brush, I do tend to do that. I won't die, don't worry. <laughs> Not that bad for you. She says. Adding a bit of blue in the shadow just to pick up the blue here. I haven't realised I've only got one blue one. That should work. So if I get quiet, I'm um, um, still here. <laughs> I'm concentrating. It's hard to talk and paint at the same time. It's like, it's weird. You have to be like, <laughs> really. And then when I'm concentrating on the detail bits, I, I like end up going really quiet. Normally, if it, this was like live, then you'd all be chatting amongst yourselves and it, everything would be fine. <laughs> Squeaky chair. That's a bit of shadow to this one. Down here. 
here. Right, let's add some more. I'm trying to do this really quickly. I don't think it shows, does it show? Yes. I'm just making a mess. <laughs> Again, I'm coming in over the top of the um, the green that's sort of dry, then you can um, add, I don't like that green, it wants to be more yellowy, yeah. add some detail, not too much, <laughs> still want to clean up here. I like I don't know, I've got a big blob of something. It's not nice. You can find the edges of the white flowers with the um, with the green. It's quite nice. And now I'm going to get a really thin brush, which you don't often see me do. If I can find a thin brush, that would be a thing. <laughs> this one, I do. I've got my um, rigger. This is a face screw rigger. And I'm just going to use it to um, do the ends of the stamens. Oh, at the beginning, I should have said you need, also need like a white Posca pen or some white watercolour or ink or something because I do like to go back in and just get some highlights in the middle of the flowers. Just make some pop a bit. Oops. Just making a few of the um, stains a bit darker and then adding the ends. The pollen bits. Right nearly there. <laughs> the bit of the um what you call it like a production line <laughs> where you like do each one separate but that really finishes off the flowers and um makes you this one's gonna be darker, so the darker bits it sort of finishes off the flower and it makes it pop. To pops a bit. Can you hear the rain outside? It's horrible, horrible, horrible. You can see where the salt's working out, it adds a really nice effect. I get bored doing this bit and then I start hurrying, but <laughs> take your time. <laughs> I'm only hurrying, hurrying because I want this to be like a, a quick video. I didn't want it to go on for too long. Just to add. Something that everybody can have a go at. without getting too detailed. Just a nice loose wet into wet painting and just letting the paint do what it wants more or less. Let's add some also I'm here with this dark brush and add some darker bits to the 
leaves and the stems, just little bits here and there. Just trying to think where the shadows would be. Now if I was going to work on this um, a bit more, I'd probably um, start doing more shadows in the um, petals and the flowers of the flowers and things like that and doing the stems and probably like more petals coming out of here and just working on it but that is what I'm calling oh no I'm not going to call it finished yet I was going to show you what I use the Posca pen for um <laughs> she says you need a Posca pen <laughs> and um where have I put mine there you I'll show you. Where are they? I've tidied up my studio. And, um, so, what does that mean? I can't find what I'm looking for. Here we go. This is a plastic pen. It's an acrylic paint pen. It could be seen. And if I've got one that works, that's not a horrible colour. It picks up the watercolour when I use it. And um, you can sort of add some highlights to the little dotty bits you can also use um, white gouache as well or paint really meticulously so you don't have to add any white or use masking fluid at the beginning but i quite like doing this There you go, finished. <laughs> I'll wait for this to uh, dry and then you can um, have a go yourself. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and also like and subscribe. And I hope I've inspired you to have a go. It's really simple, just have a go, go and splash some paint about and have fun. Bye. <laughs>